Hello, and welcome to the session, Best Practices for Block Storage on Google Cloud. My name is Ruben Hess, and I'm a product manager on the Compute Engine team. And today, I have some exciting new developments in block storage to share with you. Before we jump in, I have a short safe harbor statement. The purpose of this presentation is to provide better visibility into our current product plans and contains forward-looking statements. While we strive to meet the timelines you will see, this is not an official commitment, but our current best estimate. Products on our roadmap and any products in early release are not guaranteed to become generally available or may be significantly modified from their current form. In this session, we'll see an overview of block storage on Google Cloud with details of what is new this year. We cover available disk types and discuss how the new disk types fit into the product family. We then dive deeper into how to select the right disk types for your workloads to better optimize performance and cost. Finally, We'll cover some details of how throttling and performance works for block storage, ending with some simple best practices. This year, we're expanding our persistent disk product portfolio with two new disk types. Balanced PD is our general purpose disk, best suited for enterprise applications. And for the highest performance workloads such as SAP HANA and other high-end in-memory databases, we're introducing Extreme PD. At the same time, all of our existing disk types are seeing substantial increases in performance this year. We have increased the maximum sustained read IOPS for zonal SSD persistent disks. You can now issue 100,000 IOPS per second, up from 60,000 previously. IOPS sensitive workloads should see substantial benefits from this increase. We've also increased the maximum sustained throughput for zonal persistent disks from 1,200 megabytes reads and 400 megabytes writes. Five times the sustained read throughput enables cost-effective implementation of large-scale throughput-intensive workloads, such as Hadoop. Some workloads are optimized for TCO. Others need every bit of performance they can get. Google Compute Engine now offers a wider spectrum of disk types to match your workload needs, providing you with the same flexibility that our VM families already offer. With the new disk types, you can pick the right price performance profile for your workload storage needs. Let's look at some of these changes a little more closely. Generally available this month, Balanced PD is our new general purpose disk for Google Compute Engine. It offers SSD performance and represents an over 40% saving compared to Performance PD, offering the lowest TCO for general purpose workloads. Balanced PD has the right performance for most enterprise apps, web servers, and even some small and medium databases. It also offers many of the same advanced features you already know from Performance PD. You can create regional or zonal volumes, and you can attach multiple instances to a single volume in read-only mode. Balanced PD replaces standard PD as the new general purpose disk. With six IOPS per gigabyte and a maximum of 80,000 sustained IOPS, it offers significantly higher performance and more performance per dollar. In fact, whether write heavy, read heavy, or in between, Balanced PD offers two times the IOPS per dollar for most use cases or better. This means that despite the higher cost per gigabyte, for many workloads, Balanced PD can actually lead to improved TCO when you take into account the impact of faster performance at the workload level end to end. This can express itself in the form of cost savings from faster task completion, for example, reduced data proc costs, or in the reduced need to size to IOPS rather than pure capacity. Performance PD is our new name for PD SSD, as it continues to evolve and focus on performance sensitive workloads. This year, we have already increased read IOPS from 60,000 to 100,000, and this month, we are following this up by increasing write IOPS for zonal performance PD from 30,000 to 100,000 as well. Similarly, this month we are also increasing write throughput from 800 to 1200 megabytes per second. And so zonal performance PD will have full read write parity going forward. Customers running databases with write heavy workloads should see noticeable improvements in performance from a threefold increase in write IOPS and 50% improvement in write throughput. And performance PD continues to have the best price per IOPS. We will also continue to add more advanced features to Performance PD. And so in 2021, in addition to the existing multi-reader feature, we will offer a multi-writer feature on this disk type. We expect to have this ready for preview later this year. For use cases that need more IOPS or more throughput than Performance PD offers, we're introducing Extreme PD. Extreme PD is our new disk type for high-end performance critical applications. 
It has been designed with SAP HANA and other high-end in-memory databases in mind. At launch, it'll offer 120,000 provisioned IOPS and 2.4 gigabytes a second of maximum sustained throughput. Extreme PD introduces provisioned IOPS, allowing you to provision capacity and performance separately. Provisioned IOPS are specified at disk creation and then can be changed dynamically at any time, allowing you to adjust disk performance to the specific requirements of your workload over time. Next year, there will also be explicit performance SLAs for provisioned IOPS. Extreme PD is preview available this month and general availability is expected to follow in the third quarter. Finally, we've also continued to improve local SSD. Local SSD now offers more than three times the IOPS, 2.4 million read and 1.2 million write IOPS. And local SSD now supports nine terabytes, a threefold increase in maximum capacity. For flash optimized databases, performance sensitive analytics or hot caches, local SSD now offers industry leading performance per dollar for local storage. With the new disk types and improved performance for existing disk types, you can pick the right price performance profile for your workload. Let's have a quick look at choosing the right disk type. For many workloads, three criteria help to quickly identify a good starting point for the right disk type. Firstly, what does the price performance profile look like? What are your workload's I.O. and throughput requirements? How sensitive is the workload to storage scale and cost? Second, what are the availability and durability requirements? If the workload is replicating data across instances, is this being handled at the app, database, or storage layer? Finally, what storage capacity will be needed? Looking at performance in a bit more detail, the right price and right price performance by workload depends on the disk type. The exact performance requirements will of course vary for each specific workload. But in general, the type of workload will be a good indicator of which disk type is likely to be a good fit. Workloads that are performance critical, that depend on the highest available throughput and or IOPS and need durability are likely best served by Extreme PD. An example of this might be in memory databases. IOPS driven performance sensitive workloads like most larger databases are a good fit for Performance PD. Performance PD offers the best price per IOPS. Balance PD offers substantially lower TCO than Performance PD and offers the right performance for web serving, line of business, and IT apps. Finally, Standard PD is likely a good fit for throughput-oriented, cost-sensitive workloads with substantial capacity requirements, such as, for example, Hadoop or Kafka. Similarly, durability and availability requirements will vary by workload. As it is ephemeral, local SSD is a good option for stateless workloads where replication is managed at the app or database layer. Zonal persistent disk is, of course, durable. It also supports snapshots, which can be saved to a different region for geo-redundancy. For mission-critical workloads that need to meet very low recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives, regional persistent disk provides a highly available option. Regional PD offers RPO0 for single failures and RTO less than a minute at a disk level. Of course, the storage requirements may not apply uniformly to entire workloads. Sometimes different needs within a workload are best met by different disk types. For example, for a SQL Server instance, you might leverage the higher IOPS, lower latency, and lower cost of local SSD for tempdb, which doesn't need to be persistent and have the data on performance or even extreme PD. For an analytics pipeline, you might have source and output data on the Google Cloud Storage, while the intermediate data that's produced by one stage of your pipeline and consumed by another might be on persistent disk or local SSD to achieve higher performance. Using different disk types with an instance has interesting performance implications. Let's have a look at understanding disk performance in a bit more detail. Persistent disk performance depends on disk type, disk size, instance type and size. In this example, I have an N2 standard instance with 64 vCPU that can support a maximum of 100,000 IOPS. My performance PD volume is sized to three terabytes and at 30 IOPS per gigabyte, that results in 90,000 IOPS. If my workload benefits from having access to the full 100,000 IOPS, I could get there by increasing the size of the volume correspondingly. On the other hand, if I were to create a balanced PD of the same size instead, the volume would have 18,000 IOPS. For some existing workloads, 
Disks are sized to reach IOPS requirements versus fulfilling capacity needs. For these workloads, especially if they are on PDE standard disks, the introduction of balanced PDE might change the equation. Throughput for performance PDE and balanced PDE is full duplex. Workloads can use 1200 megabytes read and 1200 megabytes write concurrently. On the other hand, IOPS pull from the same budget. So read IOPS plus write IOPS hit the same 100,000 or 80,000 limit for performance PD or balance PD respectively. Disks of the same type count by total capacity regardless of volume. One disk of three terabyte or two disks of the same total capacity behave the same way. In this example, my two disks add up to the same capacity that I had previously provisioned, and I continue to have 90,000 IOPS. Under contention, the IOPS are split evenly across the volumes, regardless of size. If your workload has specific requirements for subcomponents or tasks, control the IOPS consumption at the workload level. PD disks of different types consume the same instance level IOPS and throughput budget. In this example, I've added a standard PD disk to the instance, and I now have to watch for smaller jobs on PD standard consuming IOPS or throughput during spikes for the performance PD bound workload. Local SSD and persistent disk do not share an IOPS or throughput limit. Let's have a look at some best practices and pitfalls that we currently see. Disks smaller than 500 gigabytes have a boost feature. This allows them to boost the performance to that of a 500 gigabyte drive for short periods of time. For the most predictable performance, size disks to be at least 500 gigabytes. In larger scale out workloads, and in some workloads that migrated from on premise, we sometimes see persistent disk used as if it weren't durable. In other words, workloads sometimes rebuild data disks for nodes after instance or node failure. And in these cases, seeing if rebuilding the data disks is really needed might result in substantial performance improvements. For large nodes, this can turn minutes or even hours of recreating data disks into seconds of reattaching to the existing disk. As we just learned, local SSD instance limits are separate from persistent disk instance limits. Pairing it up allows PD to achieve higher performance. For example, using local SSD as scratch space can move IOPS from PD volumes hitting instance IOPS limits or run the workload in local SSD with a replica or backup in PD. Finally, I want to cover peak versus average performance and throttling. Workloads with spikes will see throttled IOPS and or bytes even while average performance is not hitting the maximum of the instance or volume. You'll see this by average meters showing performance below what you would see as a maximum, but potentially peak showing values that are much higher. This is because average meters cover one minute intervals, while peak is a point in time measure. What this means is that for these workloads, there are often two different ways of achieving better performance. You could increase the IOPS for the volume, for example, by changing capacity, disk type or instance type, or it might be possible to smooth out the spikes of requests coming from the workload. If feasible, the latter can achieve the same end result without increasing the resources required and hence the TCO of the workload. And that concludes our session today covering best practices for block storage on Google Cloud. With Balanced PD and Extreme PD, we have introduced two new disk types that fundamentally change the price performance profile for general purpose and performance critical workloads respectively. And together with the substantial improvements in performance for the existing disk types, you can now pick the right disk for your workload, matching the flexibility you already had with our VM families. Thank you.